Hi and welcome to Microbiology Shorts. These are short videos on microbiology topics. I'm Rebecca Payne and this topic is on killing bacteria with heat. There are a number of different ways that you can kill bacteria with heat. Um, the first way that we'll talk about today is using moist heat and basically that is steam. Uh, the way that moist heat kills is that it denatures the proteins of the microbe, the bacteria, and when the proteins are denatured, the cell can no longer function and therefore it dies. Typically, moist heat sterilization is done inside of a machine called an autoclave, which is essentially a very large stainless steel chamber, like you can see in the picture on the right, that you can fill with pressure and high heat and water that will turn into steam. And the combination of high temperature moist heat in the form of steam and high pressure will kill bacteria very, very effectively. Um, usually there's a central empty chamber and there's a door with a handle that you would rotate closed, kind of like you would imagine on a submarine sort of a deal for the high pressures underwater. Um, you load everything inside. Once everything's loaded inside, then uh, and the door is closed, then the machine goes on, the steam fills this chamber, and after a certain amount of time, at a certain amount of pressure, usually it's about 121 degrees Celsius for about 15 or 20 minutes, um, that will effectively kill bacteria and most endospores and a variety of other things that um, you would want to kill if you were trying to. Inside the autoclave, since you can't open the door while the process is happening, um, typically there are some little pieces of either tape or in this case this is a picture of pieces of paper that you would put inside uh, to see if the machine is working properly and if the machine is working properly it'll turn a color once the sterilization process has completed. If it's not working properly it'll remain the, the initial color. Um, to properly sterilize, the steam must contact the item's surface for the entire time that it's working. And this can, um, this can sometimes be a mystery uh, since we're on the outside and can't look in and there are no windows inside of the, of the autoclave. Dry heat, so not using steam essentially, is another way to kill microbes, specifically bacteria. You can kill, pardon me, I'm yawning, it's early in the morning. <laughs> um, dry heat typically kills by oxidizing bacteria. It's reacting with oxygen. And there are three general types of dry heat sterilization that we can use to kill bacteria or other microbes. We flame them. In other words, we take a Bunsen burner and put the flame on and burn the bacteria off of the surface of the loop or the needle or whatever implement we're trying to use. The second way is incineration, which is similar to flaming, except usually it, this is with dry goods or medical goods, surgical waste, and they just actually get completely burned to ash, and then that's finished when they are ash. Third way is hot air sterilization. This is kind of like an autoclave, except it is not under high pressure and there is no steam. So think of this like, for example, a kitchen oven. If you put material in an oven and use just hot air with no steam, it takes about two hours at 170 degrees Celsius to kill all the microbes that you could kill at the same, um, uh, if you put them in an autoclave, it takes 15 minutes at 121 degrees Celsius. So these are what we call equivalent treatments, meaning they'll do exactly the same amount of bacterial killing, but it's just that the autoclave takes a lot less time and a lower temperature so it can be more affordable to do it this way and quicker which is good in a laboratory setting where we don't have all day to sterilize what we do to sterilize. Whoops. Pasteurization is the last type of killing using heat. Uh, pasteurization unlike the dry heat sterilization or autoclave sterilization, pasteurization is not uh, a process that you get done with and you have a completely sterile end product. So pasteurization reduces the number of bacteria but does not eliminate all bacteria in the organisms. 
typically pasteurization is used for um, a situation where you would kill the material that you're trying to kill the bacteria in. So for example, milk. If you autoclave milk, it's not going to be drinkable once you get done with it. Um, same thing with orange juice, for example. If you autoclave orange juice, it's not going to be a drinkable product at the end of it. So we can't use dry heat or moist heat sterilization for especially food pro products like milk or orange juice. So pasteurization takes them through a heating process that kills most all organisms, virtually all the pathogens, all the mesophiles essentially, but we do have some thermoduric, what we call thermoduric or heat resistant organisms that can survive pasteurization. This is why you can get a container of orange juice from the store and you can still put it in your fridge and it will eventually spoil because there are still a few heat resistant organisms that survive the pasteurization process. In an industrial setting, um, companies want to do pasteurization as fast as they possibly can. The more they, the faster they can pasteurize, the more product they can process through their facility. And they can make more money if they do it quicker. So in the olden days, or if you're at home working on your stovetop, you can do number one here in the list at the bottom. You can, you can heat up whatever you're trying to pasteurize, 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, and that will pasteurize whatever you're using. You can also do number two, or three, if you're a company though, and this takes a lot less than 30 minutes. Uh, number two takes 15 seconds, number three takes less than one second to kill the same number and types of bacteria that you're killing in 30 minutes with number one. So the second process is called high temperature short time or flash pasteurization. It's a little bit higher temperature than the initial number one, the regular at home old style pasteurization. So you take that up to 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds and that will kill most microbes. Or number three, which is called ultra high temperature pasteurization. This is much higher temperature, 140 degrees Celsius, virtually double high temperature short time or flash pasteurization. And the time takes to do this is less than one second. Ultra high temperature pasteurization generally involves squirting the liquid through a, a superheated nozzle uh, and, and that's how it's pasteurized instead of doing it in a large vat. Uh, it's, so it's a different end process to get it done. We call these treatments, number one, two, and three at the bottom there, equivalent because they will kill the same number of bacteria, the same kinds of bacteria. It's just that number two and three are much better for industrial processes and the companies that use them. All right, so that's the end of this short topic. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this micro microbe short. And come back again and visit me again, and I'll have more for you in the future. Have a great day.